Welcome to Belmont Banter, the official podcast of Whitstable Town FC. Every week we chat to ex-players, supporters and invited guests here on Belmont Banter. Welcome to the official podcast of Whitstable Town FC. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Belmont Banter. And this week, we've got a, well, let me call him a fan's favourite, a club favourite, Stephen Lloyd. He's been around Whitstable Town for a long time, but he's done other things in his life. And the reason that we're chatting this evening is to find out a bit more about Stephen's journey. I don't know how it all started. So, Stephen, where, what's your sort of earliest memory of football? When, you, when did you first start kicking a ball? Um, I started kicking a ball probably watching my dad on the Saturdays. My dad used to play for the Upper Red Line, uh, the pub. Um, he used to play, all I can remember was Cherry Orchards. And I used to play with um, like other p- kids from the team and stuff like that. And then uh, one day we were down at Cherry Orchards in Herm Bay under 10s. I believe mm-hmm. they were training down there and um, I started kicking the ball around and I believe the manager was John. I can't remember his second name. And he just asked if I wanted to join in. And then I joined in and basically from there, I started playing for home by under 10s. Uh, Jack Delo played with it, uh, played for him. The Whiteheads, the brothers, they played. Yeah, yeah just, just played there. I was actually started playing in midfield, centre midfield. I mean, then, you're, you're a big, tall lad now. What were you like at 10? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was about average from my height. I still say I was taller than Alex Hossick. He'll probably argue that. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was probably about average size, I would say. Yeah. And then I was playing centre midfield. And then one of the centre-offs, I, I don't, can't remember her name, um, got injured. And then I... Went back there and played there, and then I played week in, week out there. My dad took over the team from John, he was manager, and then I, um, yeah, then I played for QPR. I got a trial down at QPR, I went with Jack Delo every Thursday down at Lewisham, played there. I can't remember age, to about 12, 13. That must have been then, a big commitment for your mum and dad. Yeah, to be fair, like Jack's dad and my dad, we sort of took it in turns. We were lucky because, in a way, Jack's dad, uh, Nick, um, owned a shop in Canterbury, Mm -hmm. the lunchbox. We used to meet there because Jack went to Barton Court and I went to Chaucer, Chaucer Technology School. So we both met up and used to walk there and one of them would take us to training, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, played them, obviously played for... District, um, Kent School, and Kent FA. Yeah, and then I got released from QPR. I think Jack, um, Jack might have carried on. I can't really remember. I was still playing for Herne Bay. And then uh, I went to Millwall. No, yeah, Millwall. I was at Millwall for a bit. Um, playing then I was on Sundays if... Millwall didn't have a game. We was play, I was playing for Sturry Blues because parents at Herne Bay were getting upset that I was turning up when I wasn't like training and things and playing. So I left and went to Sturry Blues with Alex Hossick. John Cummings was the manager. And then Sturry Blues folded, but they turned into Canterbury City. So I was playing with Canterbury City. And then, yeah, I got released from... Millwall, and then I was just playing for Canterbury City, and then I was walking with uh, Alex Hossick to school one day, and Ian got a fo- um, Alex got a phone call from Ian. Um, he was Ian was playing for Herne Bay Resies. I was 15 at the time, and then yeah, just Jason Leppard. They were short, and he just wanted players, and I went down and played. We well, was away to, away to Hastings, all the places yeah. to go. Yeah. Midweek game at Hastings. And when I played there, and then at 15, oh, Nick Denley was the manager of Herne Bay first team. He was a good manager, Nick, really good manager. He was sort of putting me into game, like being around the first team squad, like sitting on the bench. Mm-hmm. And then like he 
he was playing me right right midfield when I'm left footed. Never really worked, but I can understand why he'd done it. He, when he speaks, spoke to me, it was just to keep me out of the way, like of all the big lumps, just to get a feel for it. And then the second season, I was basically playing for Herbay first, week in, week out, with Nick Denley as the manager. I had I was lucky, he ran me. I had um, Martin Collins, he was he was a good player. Um Danny Maxted. Yeah, Danny. Danny. Yeah. yeah, Danny and Russ, Russ Mason. Yeah, Russell Mason, yeah. Um, so they all sort of took me under their wing, looked after me. <laughs> Had Clive Stace and Andy Tom Thompson uh, looking after me as well. I won't say what they were saying to me, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, from there, yeah, I was just playing football, <laughs> loving it, absolutely loving it. Steve, before we go on talking about Herne Bay, which I'm, I don't want to stop your mid-flow, mid I've got a question for you about your time at QPR and then also at Millwall. Did it affect you being released by them at all? Not, I wouldn't say QPR as such, because I, I was young. <clears throat> it always, I guess, because with QPR, we wasn't, we were, we were training every um, Thursday, but the games were literally once a month if that so it, it didn't really affect me but um Millwall did Millwall because I was how do I put it I was I was enjoying playing there I was playing with like Peter Sweeney obviously they went that sort of age group yeah a lot of their players went on and like what played in the FA Cup final looking back on now I was a bit gay but who, who knows? If I put a bit more into it, who would know? But yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit of kicking the teeth. I was. Um, I actually remember how it was done as well. I was it was after a training session? I got called into. In, we was actually training at um, at Bromley where Millwall train. I got called into the change room. I had Dave Mennett, uh, Dave Mehmet and um, Jimmy Carter was the manager. He played for Arsenal and Liverpool. He had a stint at Millwall. Yeah, they basically called me in. They were both sitting in front of me. I sort of knew it was coming. I wasn't, I was playing, but I was coming off and stuff like that. They basically sat me down and just said, look, unfortunately, we have to let you go. Um, we're not going to renew your contract. I was on a two-year contract, so I was coming up to the end of it. It, 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 it did kick me in the seat, like, in, in my I can't say it, but you know what I mean. No, I know it, did, what you mean yeah. it did affect my confidence, big, really big. That's why it was like it was quite good. Like, had Nick sort of, I think Nick knew that. Nick, Nick Denley he sort of, he built me up again, and so so did John Walden because John Walden was at the club. I have a lot. Of, I know some people um, say things about John, but he he was a top top man. John, I've John got a Walden. lot of time for John Walden. Nice guy. Nice yeah, he, he basically, like, look at his son, but basically he 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 would, when I was at Herne Bay, we were doing extra training afterwards, he was building my confidence back up, and, yeah, he was showing me showing me different ways, if you know what I mean, and, and he, I have a lot of time for John Morden. So what age were you then in Herne Bay's first team under Nick? Uh, 15. My goodness me. Wow, I've got I lucky. I've got, I've got a scrapbook, and I was I was looking through it today to try and remember some dates. But yeah, I was fifteen when I made my uh, first team appearance. Goodness me, and it's it's at that age, it's men against boys, isn't it? Yeah, it, I can understand like why Nick sort of put me out out on the wings and things like that because it it was. Yeah. I can remember my first game playing uh, centre half. It was against Faversham at home. Yeah, that was that was an experience. I basically, I think I got kicked up in the, head, the air half the time. It should have been the other way around. But that's where like John Warden, Danny Maxted, Martin Collins, and all those people sort of they they helped me basically. They they showed me how to do it. Especially Russ Mason as well. He 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 was a good player. Especially it reminds Gary Sayers a bit like him. I feel well the way they both run actually. Both Gary yeah. and Russell, they both run the same. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it's a good point. And both committed players as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. It just went from there. Yeah, I was just playing for home base. 
That's brilliant. Um, so how long did you end up staying at Bay then? So Nick Denley, <coughs> he resigned. And then uh, Neil Brown took over. It was halfway through the season. So Neil Brown took over. And then Simon Bright came manager for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got put on to... Herne Bay put me onto contract. So, yeah, then Simon Bryant left. And then Jason Lillis took over. Another good guy. And that's the year where we come second in the league to Ramsgate. That's yeah. where we were chasing, basically, I think it went down to the last two games of the season with Ramsgate. Yeah, you, you were a good side then, back then. Definitely were a good side. Yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've listened to the podcast before, but that changing room, I don't know how Jason Lillis done it, but I think we would have all died for each other if, if it was such a good change room. It's like after, after training, Jason would have, we would go, I know it sounds stupid, but we would go to a pub, we would, we would socialise and, I can always remember, like, my birthday, unfortunately, falls on New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Day, sorry. And um, he arranged for all the players to go up. To, we went out in Maidstone. And like, I didn't know about it. It turned up on New Year's Eve to, to the casino, I think, at, in Ramsgate, if I remember. Um, not Ramsgate. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Casino rooms. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. But, and then all the players, all the players were in there. So, it was, yeah, that was, that was brilliant. Like, we had Danny Kedwell... What, like, look what he went on to. Yeah, absolutely. So that particular season, you came runners up to Ramsgate. Um, yep. And did Jason stay on for the following season? Yeah, he did. I, um, Ramsgate, Jim Ward coming for me. Met him at the ship in Herne Bay with um, Richard Lawson. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of money put on a table in front of me to get me to sign. And it turned out they had the um, the secretary also sitting in the car in the car park, waiting for me, waiting to come in for me to sign. But um, yeah, I turned down the money because like, they got promoted. They went to the Premier. I turned did, down the money. Yeah. And I stayed at Herne Bay. I felt like I I owe, I owed Herne Bay in that's, a way. That's good. That's good. Because um, I always said, I know it sounds silly, but I always said that I'll never leave a team, uh, we were in the same league as home, but I know Ramsgate went up, but that season we had, I felt like we could kick on and probably win it. So I stayed on and then I don't know who won, the, was it Whistball won the league that year? Or I, don't was it? It was, I don't think it was that year, I think it was a couple of years after or a year after. Well, I stayed till Herne Bay with Jason Lillis until you got promoted. Yeah, that was under six. Yeah, then... I met up through Alex Hossick and Ian Hossick. I spoke to Sigs and I, I just felt it was right for me to come over to, to Whitstable. I, I needed to progress. I was getting, I know it sounds weird, sort of stagnant in, it was the Kent League back then. Yes. I got stagnant, I was getting stagnant and I needed a new new challenge. So I spoke to Sigs and, and then come over to Whitstable. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. And that was the first of many managers whilst you were at Whitstable, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were talking before, was it five or six managers? It's got to be, yeah, it's got to be that number. It was, I'm, I'm trying to remember, it was um, Siegs. Yeah. Was it Mark Monday then? Mark Monday, um, um, Peter Knott, I believe. Uh, I don't know what all, I don't know what order these were in. These are yeah. not. Um, Simon was there for, with us as manager for a little while, wasn't he? Yeah, because I left. I left. I went. I was only at Whitstable for a year because then um, Jim Ward came in for me again, and I went yeah. to went to Ramsgate. Yes. Um, yeah, and then I come back. I went back to Herne Bay. It didn't quite work out at Ramsgate. Went back to Herne Bay under uh, uh, Barry Morgan. Uh, stayed there for a season. Yeah, and then Mark Monday took over and I went under, come back under Mark under Monday. Mark, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, then it was like a manager every every half of the season, I think it was. It was a bit of a turbulent time for Whistler, that's for sure. But you did enjoy some uh, some good games and, I mean, it, anybody that knows you would know that you were a fan's favourite there. You were a, such a wholehearted player for us. Yeah, 
I always thought I, I hated, I absolutely hated if another team scored or a forward got better, like better of me. Mm-hmm. Like, I hated playing against like Richard Dimmock. I think he was at VCD. Yeah. God, oh. I hated, I absolutely hated playing against him. Um, I love playing against Andy Constable. He was, yeah. he was, I love, me and him have a mutual respect for each other. Um, but yeah, you know, but Richard Dimmock, I actually. <laughs> I absolutely hated playing against him. <laughs> he was some player though, wasn't he? Oh God, yeah, he was good in the air. He was like for, he was a big bloke. Yeah, he was good in the air. He was, he was strong. And yeah, for a big bloke, he was quick as well. I wasn't yeah. really gifted with pace. No, but uh, you gave your all, which is what it's all about. So after Whitstall, where did you move on to then? I went, I went back to Herm Bay. Yeah, I went back to. I think, I went back to. Herm, who, yeah, because I received because Jason Lutch, Jason Lutzford was manager. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that was that was the only sad time at Whitstable for me. I, I I can remember it now. It was on a it was a Sunday afternoon. I think we played Canterbury City on the Saturday uh-huh. in a friendly, um, and then on Sunday just received a text message out of nowhere saying basically um, while I'm at uh, Whitstable you're never going to be in the first team. And I think Gary Sad received the same same text message. And then I went back. Luckily, Herne Bay got promoted that year. So I went back to Herne Bay under yeah. Simon Housley. You, your, your career has been Herne Bay, Whitstable, Herne Bay, Favish, sorry, not Favish, Herne Bay, Ramsgate, Whitstable, Herne Bay, Herne Bay. Yes. So you're, you're back at Herne Bay and you're now in the... Ishmian, or what was the Ryman League? Yeah. How long? And, and under Simon Halsey, yeah. I mean, Simon, yeah, yeah. Simon was a good manager, and he is a good manager. Yeah, yeah, he was a good manager. Some, we, we didn't see eye to eye all the time, but I guess that's, that's a manager's job to be ruthless. He does wear his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? Yeah. He was like, like Siegs as well. Mark well, Siegs, like, I can. I can remember like when he, because um, I used to play at Earn Bay week in, week out. I, I knew, I guarantee I'd be in the team. And then I was playing for Whitsville and he dropped me. He dropped me for a game. And I went up to him, and why you dropped me? And he said, you need a rest. He said, you've played, he knew everything. He knew everything about a play. He said, you've played so many games, you need a rest. And obviously I wanted to play. So I was like, no, I want to play. And he was like, no. And then I was always going to lose, but it's worth having an argument. I said, just to, just to put my point across. But I can see why I've done it now. Now I'm older, I can see why I've done it. Yeah, I've, I've played from 15. I think I played week in, week out and didn't miss a game. Your career was still a way to run, though, even though no, we're talking about, what, were you in your mid-20s then or late 20s? No, I think I was about 27, 28. Yeah. I was out on Bay with Simon and then he got the, he got the sack. Mm. That was um, harsh. That was harsh. Yeah, that that yeah, that was harsh. That's not for me to get no. anything, but looking no. back, yeah, that was a bit harsh how they done it to him, to be yeah. fair. Um and then Sam Denny took over. Yeah. Great um, manager. Sam's a great, great manager. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. And um played with when Sam he, he put I got in I think I I done my hamstring. Mm-hmm. I come back, um, he put me out on loan to get match games to Canterbury City. And then, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, um, <coughs> yeah Sam, Sam, I come back under Sam after being out on loan. And then I, I decided to have a, a career change. I, um, I, was a calm, well, I was working for Volkswagen as a, as a technician. And then I just decided I was bored of it and I would become a police officer for the Met. Um, and basically part of the recruitment was if I, if I, basically if I got injured, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to carry on playing. Um, Cause if I got injured, I'll basically get put back on class. And then if I failed exam or anything like that, I, I get put back again. And then that's it. You get chucked out. And yeah. obviously I had it at that time, my Elsie, my eldest, I had a fa- lot of my family to support, so basically I had to to pack it in. That was it. You packed in football at twenty eight. 
uh, packed in at 29. I went, what happened was I went after I was with Sam for a season and then I, um, I went to Canterbury City as assistant manager. I'd done that for a year and then I got offered, basically I got, I got offered a job if I wanted to do it permanently, but I couldn't commit mm-hmm. to it because obviously shift work um, with the police. So I turned it down and yeah, I haven't been back. Well, the last time I went back into a football ground, like non-league was uh, Herne Bay for Martin Collins um, oh, Memorial yeah. game. Yeah. And that was the last time and that was in six years. So it's 30. I uh, last time before then was in a, in a football ground. Blimey. Blimey. And for someone that's uh, literally, you know, 15 years of your life almost, you've been involved with football from the age of, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, right the way to, to your 30, 20 years virtually. Um, yeah. Incredible, incredible. Incredible. Tell me something. This, this stint as um, assistant manager, did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, to be fair, I did. I, I really did. The only thing I think I said I wouldn't do, but it, it happened, was I said I wouldn't lose. Like I've been in changing rooms where managers would go in, we'd be like, just say 2 0 down or not playing well and throw a proper, proper wobbler in the changing room. Like things go flying and players get hurt and things like that. And um, I said I'd never do that. And basically, we were. I can't remember who's plank. It was a FA Cup game. I think it was like Beast, Beasted. It was Beasted. Mm-hmm. And obviously Canterbury City, they were short. They're not the richest club. No. And they were short on money. And um, basically we had to win. And the first half was absolutely awful. And I went in there and I lost it. Um, and Sam Kettle, unfortunately, was sitting in front of me. And I booted this water bottle. Well, no, I threw the water bottle. And it, it, well, it didn't hit him, but all the water literally soaked him. I lost it. I had to walk out. And then I was like, I just because I wore it on my sleeve. I, my, I love playing. I love football. I love winning. Winning is an addiction. You keep winning. It's the best feeling ever. It's like when going back to when Herb Bay were chasing the league, that, that feeling week in, week out of winning. It was just, you can't beat it. Now, that's something that a lot of players have said, Stephen. And I've experienced it with with Whitstall, listening to the players. You go out there not thinking you're going to win, knowing you're going to win, and it's such a different feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. To to sum it up, it's like when I can remember when Ramsgate come down to Herne Bay. Basically, Jim Ward walked was walking from the entrance to the basically the changing room, and he had all the players around him, and he was holding a bottle of champagne. Because they, if they basically beat us, they were going to win. They were going to win the league, and I think all of us, Jason, Jason Lillis got us, got us proper going. He made us stand there and watch him do it. Got us into the changing room, and said, "If he pops that, I'm going to pop every single one of you in the face." <laughs> and we we went out there. We basically destroyed them. We won three one, but we played them off the park. Now that was one of the best games I think of. I've ever experienced. There was a big crowd down at Herne Bay. And when we, yeah, it was just, just I knew we were going to win. It was no ifs or buts. So motivation that he was trying to use on his players worked against him. Yeah, it was, it was like, like winning's an addiction. I, that's the thing I miss. I miss, I do miss football. I ain't going to lie. I'm, I miss the change rooms, the laughter. Mm. Like uh, when I first went to Whitstable, we had Tommy Martin. Oh, Tommy Martin. Uh, that boy is an absolute... <laughs> He's crazy, isn't he? he I know, I know, I know. Some of the stuff he does, done was but, unbelievable. But Steve, Steve, you know what? It doesn't matter what he says or how he says it, but he does it all with a smile on his face. And you can't, you can't be cross with him or upset because he's such a character, isn't he? Yeah, you just laugh at him. That's all you yeah, can do. Exactly. Even if he comes like to you, you just stand there and laugh at him. Yeah. Because that's how it was. And that's what you, you need people like that in the change room. You do. You do. If definitely. it gets too serious, it's people are not going to enjoy it. And like, I played a lot. I was lucky. I played with my best friends. Yeah. Like Alex Osick, Gary Sayer, Jack Delo, all that adult football. And I've made some 
some friends. You could go into her and buy, and you see you see people you used to play with. Yeah, I know. Well, th th this is a strange thing. I mean, you know this because you play both sides of the divide, as you would call it. Uh, we can go into Herne Bay and sit, I mean, like Saturday, I bumped into your dad. I, your mum was in the shop, so I didn't speak to your mum. And we had a chat for five minutes. But every time I see him, uh, he, I'm out with a wife. He's out with your mum. And we stop and have a chat, you know. And there's other people around the town. It's just that crossover. All right, on match days, it gets a bit silly with some people. But when you go from one side to the other, people understand. They do understand. Yeah, it's... It's like like Joe um, Joe Brown it um, yeah. and his wife like yeah. I'm like when I used to play for Herne Bay I used to hate I used to hate Whitstable I used to hate hate the club um, <coughs> it's just a rivalry I just I know on the football field like Alex Hossett used to play for for Whitstable when I was at Herne Bay and like my wife now Emma she could never understand it we used to kick lumps out of each other on a Saturday. And then come 90 minutes after the game, we'll be in the bar having a drink together. Or play together on a Sunday morning. I didn't really play Sunday football, to be honest. <laughs> I only know. played for the Queen Vic now and then for Ian Hossick, who, yeah. who was the manager then. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's like that. Like, it, like you say, it's just it's, you, make fr you make friends for life. You do. That's for, very, very true. You're very true. And like you just said now, you do miss it, don't you? Yeah, I, I miss the changing rooms. I, yeah. I miss the change. I miss, I miss like, you no, know, like a hard tackle. You go in on someone. I never went in nasty. I never went in to hurt anyone. I always went into an attitude if it was either me or them. I, yeah. yeah. I, I had work on Monday morning and I wanted to go to work to earn my money. Yeah. So if I had to go in hard, I'd go in hard because yeah. I didn't want to get hurt. No. Um, I was fair. I'll class myself as, as, as a fair player. Yeah, it's like like I'll, Lee Jones when I well, I can remember when the first time I ever met you, uh, Ralsey, You come up to me and said you was going to sue me. <laughs> oh, did you? You must have taken Lee out of the game, did you? Yeah, it's when he done his knee. Oh, that was the week. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a picture of that on our, on 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 the on the net. Well, there's about five players around him. Lee Jones is coming down the left hand side going towards Bay's goal, and there's about five... Martin Collins is there. I, feel, I can't remember who else was in there. You probably were in there. And uh, he gets taken out. Yeah, I know, I know. That was just one of those scenes, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just football. I'll touch wood. I've, ne I've never had a serious injury. The only thing I've ever done was my hamstring. But, yeah, yeah it, I, I miss... I, I do miss it. I do. I miss, I miss like I've said before, the, the changing room. Going in for a nice like challenge, if, like when it's a do or die challenge, they could score from it. A nice block and things like that. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I, I miss it loads. Do you know anybody that's not involved in, in football? It almost sounds like it's thuggery, but it's not. It's a, it's different, isn't it? It's completely yeah. different. Yeah. It's yeah. I, yeah. We you knew come on the night in that ninety minutes, you put your like. Your life on your. I always put say I put my life on the line for it because I yeah. I hate the ball going in and out. I hate players going round me or someone getting the better of me. It's, every player's like that, and you knew that. You you would stand toe to toe with anyone, mm. and you basically wanted to win. I I didn't like when we when we was at Whitstable. We were always fighting relegation and yeah. things like that because it's not why you want to play football. You want to no. play football to win and win the league and That's win right. cups. Yeah. Well, you've had a great career, Stephen, and you've uh, you made some great mates in football. There's no doubt about that. Well, unfortunately, we're a bit time sensitive on this, so believe it or not, our time is up, Stephen. So uh, it only remains for me to say to everyone: uh, first of all, to Stephen Lloyd, thank you for joining us here for a chat today. It's been fascinating, Steve. You going through your different bits of career. I didn't know about your QPR days and your Millwall days, and all the other bits in between, which is an insight. And also your attitude and the way that you speak so so fervently about winning and commitment to play. It's really what us supporters, and I'm, I'm a supporter, um, we're looking for in a, in a player. And that's why you were so well respected at Whistable. So fair play to you, Steve. Well done. So. Yeah, thanks, Tony. It's been good to have a chat, Tony. 
I, I knew you'd enjoy it, Stephen. I know you're a bit reluctant because when I said to Daddy, your dad, he said, oh, I don't know if he will. He will. I said, trust me, once he starts chatting, he'll enjoy it. He really will. And people people enjoy your story, Stephen. They've they've seen you down the Belmont. They've seen you at the Bay and, and elsewhere. And they know what type of player you are. You're a man's man. So well done to you. Only remains for me to uh, say thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers, Stephen. Cheers, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. They are providers of optical fiber services to the telecoms industry, specializing in optical fiber provision, local and long haul. We offer a full turnkey solution to our clients throughout London and the south of England. Contact us through the website for more details. Your host, Tony Rouse, every week on Belmont Banter for news about local football in Kent and beyond. I do hope that you've enjoyed today's episode of Belmont Banter. Don't forget there's a new episode out every week which comes out on a Sunday night, early Monday morning. And you can leave your suggestions for a guest to invite at the end. And leave a like and don't forget to pass it on to all your mates. Cheers. <laughs>